Hello students. Today we are going to make a quick revision of Kingdom Animalia. You know that uh, already you have gone through the concept once. I am trying to summarize the basic key concept. Right. Now, <clears throat> what will be the basis for classification of Kingdom Animalia? And like circulatory system, uh, blastopore, how it transforms, the type of body cavity, whether notochord is present or not. These are all the various bases. You know that traditionally animals are classified into uh, non chordates and chordates. That is one basic thing. And uh, uh, we generally say non chordates, but non chordates is not one phylum actually. It is a group of phyla. So they have, uh, they all of them do not have notochord. That is the basic difference, right? Second thing, now in the Whittaker's uh, classification of kingdom animalia, the animalia includes all the multicellular and heterotrophic individuals, which are consumers and heterotrophs. Of course, heterotrophs, but ingest to heterotrophs means they ingest and digest. Right now, we'll <clears throat> right. So, if you see, basically, we can see organisms are two types. One is diploblastic and triploblastic. That is. Two germ layers are present, and uh, uh, this uh, diploblastic condition uh, can be seen in Nidaria as well as Tinophora. So, these are the two phyla having diploblast. Diploblastic means two germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm. And uh, ectoderm give rise to epidermis, endoderm give rise to gastrodermis. They have so-called cavity called cylindron or gastrovascular cavity, but not a true body cavity. Then coming to triploblastic, uh, the triploblastic individuals are having uh, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So, mesoderm development in the evolution of kingdom animalia is a major change that uh, <coughs> promoted development of complex uh, organization. And it includes, uh, triploblastic includes uh, from phyla platyhelminthes to chordata. So, all the phyla from platyhelminthes to chordata come under triploblastic categories. <clears throat> no. Okay, start. Right. Then coming to the grades of organization, right? So if you see the basic thing, grades of organization, that is, <clears throat> so kingdom animalia is having a cellular grade of organization, what is the phylum? Porifera. Then tissue grade of organization. Tissues will be present not only need area, need area to chordata, all members have tissues. But uh, what is the next uh, major uh, criteria for further dividing? That is based on symmetry. So arrangement of body parts in a geometrical <laughs> design is called symmetry. So, in this, body can be divided through any plane passing through center into many parts. We call it radial symmetry. If you divide the body into two identical halves through median sagittal plane, we call it bilateral symmetry. Right. So, this uh, radial symmetry can be seen in cylindrata, that is, uh, <coughs> and uh, tenophora. Cylindrata is also called mid area. Then, tenophora, the comb gel is. Then coming to bilateral symmetry. So animals with uh, bilateral symmetry 
will be including from phylum platyhelminthes to chordata right so in this without body cavity acylomate platyhelminthes pseudocilum or false body cavity present in the case of ascihelminthes or nematihelminthes you can also call this as a nematihelminthes so this is uh, another name is nematihelminthes or in modern terms it can be called uh, nematoda <coughs> right then with the true silom the animals silomates include phyla from anilida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata right these are the various phyla now coming back uh, <coughs> next uh, <coughs> and kingdom animalia classification is also uh, based on silom <clears throat> so the silom we can see here three basic patterns what are the three basic patterns acylomate condition pseudocylomate condition true silomate condition so these are the three conditions and uh, <coughs> and uh, acylomate acylomate condition can be seen in platyhelminthes here this is the cavity of gut it is the gut cavity this is the body wall body wall derived aligned with ectoderm then there is endodermal lining here endoderm lining uh, the gut cavity is lined with endoderm and then the middle layer is the mesoderm and if you observe this plan there is no cavity right then that is present in platyhelminths acylomate condition diploblastic animals without body cavity present in platyhelminths next coming to pseudocilum what is pseudocilum false body cavity means they may have a cavity but not lined with mesoderm on both sides means peritoneum cannot be seen on both sides or in other words some scientists say <coughs> here if you observe this is body wall lined with ectoderm gut wall lined with endoderm then in the middle some mesodermal pouches so some cavities or structures lined with mesoderm so what is this uh, space this space is actually pseudocilum between different organs there is some cavity that can be called pseudocilum <coughs> now coming to true silom so true silom is <coughs> is a cavity lined on both sides by mesoderm you observe uh, these two layers both are silomic epitheliums so a uh, gut wall lined on outside by mesoderm and body wall on inside is lined with mesoderm on both sides there is mesoderm which can be also called peritoneum visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum right so that is a basic thing but actually in true silom also we actually divide uh, this uh, true silom into uh, two types that is schizocilum and schizocilum and <coughs> schizocilum and uh, <coughs> enterocilum that is a uh, two types of silum and uh, this uh, <coughs> schizocilum Schizocilum 
will be present in Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. A body cavity formed by split in mesoderm. Right. Second thing is enterocilo. So mesoderm arises from gut archintron. From that trocilum is formed that is called enterocilum. So schizocilum is present in phyla anilida to anilida mollusca uh, arthropoda right so anilida to mollusca and enterocilum trocilum is two types one is schizocilum other one is enterocilum this enterocilum <coughs> is present in echinodermata hemichordata and chordata <clears throat> echinodermata hemichordata and chordata these are the things so this is one body cavity is one criteria for classification and uh, we can also take into consideration the uh, we can also uh, <clears throat> So if you take uh, another important uh, criteria, what is that criteria? That is the uh, fate of blastopore. During development, morula, blastula, gastula, three conditions. And uh, gastula has an opening called uh, blastopore. And uh, blastopore may become mouth or blastopore may become anus. On that basis, we can call it, uh, we can divide into protostomes and deuterostomes. Proto means first, stone means mouth. That is a group where blastopore is changed into mouth. Now, deuterostomes means where blastopore becomes anus means stone means actually mouth uh, deutero newly stone means mouth newly formed mouth will be present anus will be derived from uh, blastopore so protostomes include platyhelminthes to mollusca means platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes anilida arthropoda and mollusca similarly Deuterostomes include Echinodermata, Hemichordata, Chordata. So these three phyla will be having same type of silo and same fate of blastopore. Now, quickly let us see the other concepts. <coughs> now, once look into this overall classification. If you see the kingdom Animalia, all the members of kingdom animalia are multicellular. Maybe they are showing cellular level of organization that includes porifera and tissue grade of organization and uh, uh, that can be seen from all the phyla but only tissue level remained is nidaria and tenophora. But no body cavity is present in which phyla means uh, cylindrata Platyhelminthes. So either you can call it uh, endoderm or gastrodermis. Coming to pseudocilum, nematoda or nematyhelminthes. Then third category is silometa. So true silom containing animal, silometa. Silometa is uh, further subdivided based on whether mesoderm uh, <coughs> is uh, forming. Uh, uh, body cavity like Shajosilom, so Anilida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. So these are the things uh, derived from split in mesoderm. And a silos, silom, uh, you, you can also remember like this. Here we are talking about uh, Shaicho 
coelomates. And here it is enterocelomates. So the enterocelomates include where echinodermata no notochord is present and hemichord it is minor phylum of course and notochord is present then it will be automatically chordata. Now let us also see chordata classification here itself because I told in the beginning it is not an entire uh, discussion about the chapter just a quick revision or overall view. Now <clears throat> notochord is present uh, either in larval stages or rudimentarily present, then we call it protocordates. So protocordates include urochordata and cephalochordata. So protocordata includes urochordates and cephalochordates, right? Then coming to vertebrata. So notochord is transformed into vertebral column and this vertebral column uh, is one of the major skeletal support. You can say all vertebrates are chordates. And we say all chordates are not vertebrates. But you can definitely say all vertebrates are chordates. So this vertebrata, uh, what is another name you can use for vertebrates? Craniates. So craniates because so the brain is supported by cranium in them. Now, uh, coming to the other groups, pisces, amphibians, reptiles, aves, mammals, right? These are the, means the gills will be present in pisces, like endoskeleton may be made up of not, uh, bone or cartilage. Whereas the rest of the four uh, groups, you, you also try to remember like this, these four groups, you can call them tetrapoda. Thus, vertebrata has been classified or categorized into two uh, super classes. The two grades uh, are like that, we can say grades means ignata and gnathostomata. And uh, within the Agnata means no jaws. Nathostomata means jaws are present. Then Pisces, fishes. And then Tetrapoda. Amphibia, reptilia, eaves, mammals come under Tetrapoda. Two pairs of limbs generally present. Right. This is an overall view. Now, <clears throat> So, here coming to Porifera. So, phylum Porifera includes multicellular animals which are all aquatic. Some are marine, rarely freshwater and they may have no symmetry at all or may be showing radial symmetry. Both are possible. For many years they were thought to be plants or plant-like animals sedentary in nature. They have a special system. The specialized system in <coughs> sponges says canal system. Water will be passing through canal system. <coughs> and this canal system, it helps in movement of water through different channels that helps in collection of food and respiration, excretion, etc. They have Actually, true germ layers will not be seen in periphera, so body is perforated by numerous pores. That's why the name periphera has been used, right? And uh, they will have different cells. On the surface of the body, they have flat cells called pinacocytes. And on the inside of uh, body cavity, they'll have uh, flagellated cells, which are called uh, coenocytes. The flagellated cells are called coenocytes. These coenocytes, <coughs> they help in drawing uh, water from the environment. Thus, it helps in carrying all the functions. They, have, they may have a skeleton, 
actually there is no exoskeleton on outside they have so called skeleton that is endoskeleton only or you can call it endoskeleton that is made up of spicule spine like structures and uh, sometimes spongin fibers and here the digestion will be only intracellular digestion actually in higher animals they'll have digestion taking place outside the cells but here the digestion is intracellular within the cells then they can show <coughs> sexual or asexual reproduction and uh, asexual reproduction is by budding and sexual reproduction by production of gametes and interestingly periphera will show uh, internal fertilization only so it occurs within the so called cavity called spongiocele the cavity of spongiocele is called spongiocele or paragastric cavity so the important examples are cycon the common sponge then spongilla then you spongia then other popular examples are also there like a uh, hyalonema glass throat sponge euplectella euplectella is called a uh, euplectella is called a uh, venus flower basket so you plectella right so you plectella is called venus flower basket now <clears throat> chalina is called dead man's finger so another example is chalina this is called dead man's finger because of its appearance and uh, these are the popular examples now coming to next phylum <coughs> that is nidaria so diploblastic animals what are the phyla we discussed one is nidaria then uh, other one is uh, tinophora nidaria members are exclusively uh, diploblastic and tinophora is also diploblastic and uh, nidaria is uh, otherwise called <coughs> old name is cylindrata nidaria is also called cylindrata and uh, here uh, all are aquatic either freshwater or marine animals and uh, they will typically have radial symmetry what is the kind of symmetry radial symmetry <coughs> so diploblastic animals externally epidermis or ectoderm internally endoderm or gastrodermis they have specialized cells called neurocytes or stinging cells and here fertilization is external digestion can be intracellular or extracellular they have specialized in nervous system uh, a thing called a nerve nets so diffused nerve nets in periphery there are no nerve cells developed only cells multicellular but no tissues but from nidaria onwards tissues are formed and this phylum is very interesting because it has popular examples of coral forming members and uh, they'll have two distinct forms called one is known as polyp and other one is called medusa an umbrella like form is medusa and uh, the <coughs> uh, cylindrical form is polyp and polyp generally reproduces by asexual methods and produces medusa and medusa reproduces by sexual methods and forms a polyp so you have these are two different some members are even polymorphic one species existing in many forms you can call it polymorphic right so coral forming members are there particularly in a class called anthozoa it includes and uh, uh, coral members and some members like scyphozoa class includes uh, jellyfishes these two are popular things right then physelia is popularly known as portuguese man of war so the popular examples physelia adamsia adamsia is a sea anemone 
then gorgonia is called c fan then <coughs> meandrina meandrina is called brain coral right coralium there is one popular other example coralium rubrum is called precious <coughs> red coral obelia one of the commonly studied and hydra so hydra is uh, uh, a very popular example with the polyp like uh, appearance nomad so form coming to the other minor phylum very closely related to nidaria is tinophora tinophora is also diploblastic but tinophora will show only sexual reproduction so tinophora will be showing only sexual reproduction and it does not have a sexual reproduction all are diploblastic they are also radially symmetrical and they are popularly called uh, comb jellies they are called comb jellies right and uh, in this <coughs> tinophora uh, they have <coughs> jelly like substance in the body they are comb jellies and uh, uh, <coughs> comb plates are present because of that they got this name and pleurobranchia and uh, tinoplan are the popular examples then plus first one in triploblastic category is platyhelminthus so platy means flat helminthus means worms flat worms they have bilateral symmetrical body first time developed and <clears throat> triploblastic and organs uh, systems also started here and it can be either free living or parasitic forms then even the first time they have some systems are not well developed so they can have they are popularly called as flat forms why they are called flat forms because the body is dorsoventrally flattened so body is dorsoventrally flattened so they are called platforms now <clears throat> so this platyhelminthus is uh, <clears throat> having acylomid condition means solid body plan they don't have any body cavity right and uh, <clears throat> here excretion excretion is performed with the help of flame cells they have flame like appearance that's why they are called flame cells excretion and osmoregulation regulation of body waters is known as osmoregulation right no circulatory system no special uh, other systems and digestive system is with uh, incomplete gut they'll have only incomplete gut they don't have complete gut it can include either parasites or free living forms so what is meant by direct or indirect development in any animals if they have a larval stage different from adults we call it indirect development for if you are in area mostly they have different larval forms that is indirect development here different classes will show different thing parasites in particular will have complex life cycles and sexual reproduction is common and regeneration may be seen in planarians which are free living then it includes uh, organisms like uh, convoluta which is a free living form and uh, coming to uh, flukes uh, flukes include fasciola fasciola hepatica this is commonly called as sheep liver fluke and then cystosoma the blood fluke of man right these are flukes and there are tape forms a tape like body so tinea solium tinea solium is called pork tape form so that is where they have <coughs> a tape like body right different tape forms are present stuck yeah so now coming to nematihelminthes or askhelminthes that is nematoda is otherwise called the nematihelminthes or askihelminthes that is another name so it includes popular examples known as ascaris ascaris is common round worm then ukraria is a filarial worm which causes elephantiasis and calostoma the hook worm and introbius is the pin worm 
and uh, even though the common roundworm term is used for ascaris majority of these animals can be called as roundworms they are all triploblastic bilaterally symmetrical forms right so these are all known as roundworms popularly all of them are called roundworms right and uh, they have pseudo coelom no circulatory system and uh, one of the specialized feature is fixed a number of cells are present we can call this phenomenon as u tele fixed number of cells will be present for u tele and uh, unisexual unisexual you can also call dioecious it's male and female separate in platyhelminthes they are monoecious means bisexual animals and uh, fertilization will be internal then <coughs> here nematihelminthes uh, or nematoda roundworms and uh, gut is generally without muscles and only exception is pharynx pharynx is muscular rest of the gut is non muscular now coming to different phyla if you see from anelida to cordata <coughs> and uh, the anelida to cordata phylas when we see see so observe these different groups organ system grade organization present in all the forms and uh, germ layers three germ layers are present in all these phyla symmetry in all of them is bilateral symmetry and <clears throat> what is speciality of echinoderms means they'll have radial symmetry in uh, adults but bilateral symmetry in larval forms cephalization started from platyhelminthes present in all but uh, not seen in the case of echinoderms right then body cavity is true coelom in all but what is the difference <coughs> you can see uh, schizocelom 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 in all these three but enterocelom enterocelom in this groups coming to segmentation segmentation will be seen in only uh, an anelida and then arthropoda traditional actually arthropoda is placed earlier than mollusca uh, just to this chart uh, it was taken like that but uh, mollusca there is no segmentation echinodermata no segmentation and chordata they'll have segmentation in embryos at least so that's why it is not obvious throughout life then coming to their blastopore condition so protostome condition is present in anelida then mollusca arthropoda but you can see deuterostome condition in the case of uh, echinodermata and chordata right then coming to digestive system first time digestive system developed in platyhelminthes it is incomplete gut as we have discussed nematoda first time complete gut developed but muscles only restricted to pharynx then you see there is a sequence of development and progressively the complexity is increasing with increasing evolutionary status from anelid onwards you can see muscular gut nematoda onwards complete gut but only pharynx is muscular thus uh, digestive system complete gut and uh, not only that from here onwards it will be muscular gut also right and complete gut is present in all these forms uh, and then <coughs> circulatory system anelida is closed 
mollusk and arthropoda open type both of them body cavity is filled with the blood called hemocele and then uh, there is no body cavity and what is important is echinoderms uh, uh, the body cavity is reduced uh, you can say that instead of absent better remember as reduced because it gets uh, transformed right transformed now <clears throat> circulatory system is reduced and circulatory system is closed type so closed in anilida and chordata among mollusca only there is one class called cephalopoda right and how are the respiration is going on anilida generally no special respiratory organs because general body wall and the gills uh, so called not true lungs actually lung like structures pulmonary sac gills means here remember the comb like structures you can call it tinidia the comb like structures are called tinidia right then trachea gills or book lungs are present uh, and uh, book gills may be present in limbless like forms then it is uh, tube feet it will be called as a tube feet in the case of echinoderms and the body wall gills respiratory trace cloacal rarely and gills will be present in aquatic chordates uh, and lungs will be present in all tetrapods tetrapods means which animals amphibians reptiles apes mammals these four groups remember they are called tetrapods maybe sometimes uh, limbs are absent in adults right now coming to uh, excretion excretion performed when nephridia in anilida metanephridia term can be used here also mollusk also and uh, excretory glands malfusion tubules then green glands will be seen in the case of crustacea green glands right green glands and then special excretory organs are absent in echinodermata kidneys mesonephric in fishes and uh, amphibians metanephric in reptiles saves mammals right then the nervous system has prominent head from arthropoda but ganglia with the paid paid ganglia and ventral nerve cords that is double ventral and solid nerve cords double ventral and solid nerve cords and uh, nerve cords uh, 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 nervous system is very well developed in mollusca and cephalopoda and here also there will be ganglia and ganglia paid here also double ventral nerve cords then nervous system shows poor development in echinodermata they have some nerve ring like things and ganglia but not uh, that much prominent as seen in mollusca and uh, arthropoda right but remember all chordates have nervous system and what is the difference you don't see ventral nerve cord here dorsal nerve cord single nerve cord tubular hollow nerve cord so we'll again once quickly look into the chordate basic characters that we'll see right reproduction all these members will have sexual reproduction but anilida uh, leeches and earthworms are bisexual whereas polychaetes like nerys are unisexual they may have sometimes uh, larval forms right trochophore larva can be seen and only leeches have internal fertilization other annelids have external and uh, you see fertilization porifera platyhelminthes nematyhelminthes leeches most arthropods and all true land vertebrates means reptiles saves mammals in all these groups fertilization is internal right so exoskeleton may be present in uh, echinodermata and uh, uh, then endoskeleton is made up of plates called dermal ossicles here 
endoskeleton is made up of cartilage or bone right so endoskeleton is made up of cartilage or bone and uh, plates in the skin and uh, hydrostatic skeleton coelom uh, is acting like marine among these groups if you see what are the only marine forms you see here the echinodermata is exclusively marine whereas uh, <clears throat> marine and freshwater both varieties are seen in other groups right this is about habitat then Right. Now coming to Chordata. So, because uh, Anilida Arthropoda Chordata in general, we have gone through a comparative chart and uh, examples and other things once you go through them. Like Anilida has the Neris, Feritima, and Hiridunaria, and uh, in Arthropoda, Epis that is honeybee, and then Bombyx. Uh, Bombyx means silkworm. Then laxifer is lac insect, Anophilus culex are mosquitoes, and then musca is housefly, locusta is uh, <coughs> gregarious pest, limulus is popularly known as uh, the king crab, right. In mollusca, the pila is called apple snail, and then pintada, the pearl oyster, then sepia is called cuttlefish then loligo is uh, <coughs> squid and octopus is called devil fish Appalachia is called sea hare and then dentalium uh, elephant tusk shell then ketoplura chiton polyplectora so mollusca will have a soft body but hard exoskeleton echinoderms what is the meaning spiny skinned animals all are marine and lastly in non chordates there is one more group called hemichordata so what is hemichordata half chordates they have body divided into proboscis collar and trunk and uh, they have a worm like body looking like annelids actually and they have proboscis gland helping in excretion open circulatory system Balanoglossus is a typical example. They also have pharyngeal slits. They are half cardiacs between non cardiacs and cardiacs. If you see echinoderms, as we have discussed earlier, enterocelum present, deuterostome condition present, spiny skin, mesodermal, uh, endoskeleton called dermal ossicles, but they don't have <coughs> not a cord, no closed circulatory system. Whereas cordata. <coughs> Then here dorsal most structure is nerve cord. Then below that notochord. And gut containing pharyngeal slits. And uh, here there will be heart actually on the ventral side there will be heart. So the typical cardiac, even they have a post anal tail. There will be a tail present after the anus region. So that is called post anal tail. Right. So that is called post anal tail. <coughs> now this is basic cardiac. So notochord is only present in cardiacs, not cardiac feature. And closed circulatory system can be seen in chordates and non chordates. And then uh, narrow cord, if it is present in non chordates, it is double ventral solid narrow cord, but chordates have a dorsal tubular narrow cord. And then a uh, brain is well developed, and heart is two to four chamber, like this. So these are the basic differences in chordates. And uh, uh, finally, we'll look into one's. Uh, various examples. The chordata
the coordinates uh, include <coughs> protocoordinates and uh, vertebrates protocoordinates and vertebrates <coughs> so the <coughs> protocoordinates uh, include which animals that is uh, Eurocordates and cephalocordates. So the Eurocordates uh, include Acidia, Salpa, Doliula. Euro means tail, Corda means notochord. Notochord present in tail region. Then cephalocordata means cephalo means head, Corda means notochord. Notochord present in the head region they includes amphioxus. They are typical or ideal chordates in which chordate characters are present throughout life. In both the protocordate groups, notochord is not at all replaced by vertebral column. So, that is about protocordates. Agnatha includes cyclostomes. In uh, cyclostomes, what are the examples? Petromyzone and uh, mixing. Petromyzone and mixing. These are basically marine, but they can also migrate. They don't have scales, endoskeleton is cartilaginous, pharyngeal slits around 6 to foot, 15 will be present. They have some fish like characters, or you can call jawless fishes also. The term jawless fishes is commonly used here. And they may have larval stage, and uh, that shows migration from seawater to freshwater, known as anatomous migration. And after it metamorphoses, they come back to sea, right? So these are the earliest uh, chordates. Then coming to uh, earliest vertebrates, sorry. Then gnathostomes, the jaws are present. Jaws containing animals are pisces. And pisces include uh, the fishes which have head, body, head, trunk and tail region. Body is covered by scales, mouth, uh, position is variable. So endoskeleton is cartilaginous or bony. Heart is too chambered here, circulating only impure or venous blood. They have mesonephric kidneys and fishes two types, chondrichthys and osteichthys. Cartilaginous fishes, chondrichthys, bony fishes, osteichthys. Cartilaginous fishes have four to seven pairs of gill slates, uh, five to seven pairs of gill slates and no operculum, no air bladder, ventral mouth and they have placoid scales on the body and uh, ureotelic all are marine. That is about cartilage fishes, sharks. So, scoliodon, carcarodon, these are all examples for this uh, <coughs> torpedo, etc. Electrically. Then, bony fishes will have interestingly an air bladder for uh, balancing in water, hydrostatic organ, and they have a terminal mouth, and uh, tenoid or cycloid scales will be present. And bony fishes. Uh, generally, they need not swim constantly like those of chondrichthys as they have air bladder for buoyancy, right? So, majority of fishes, 90% fishes, they all belong to osteichthys. That is about pisces. Then what about amphibians? Head and trunk, only two regions are present. And no scales are generally present. And three-chambered heart is present. Body is divided into head and trunk, right? So here, uh, there are popular examples uh, are present like the frog or uh, rana, we can call it a rana, right. And uh, in fishes, one more point to remember, chondrichthys is uh, exclusively marine, ostrichthys can be freshwater or marine or bony, all three categories can be present. Then ichthyophis is a limbless amphibian, coming to reptiles. What are reptiles? Those which are creeping on their bellies are called reptiles. Belly creepers, that is another term. They have three chambered hearts, so they too have incomplete double circulation like amphibians. Because both amphibians and reptiles, they don't have ventricle completely divided. Respiration by lungs. In amphibia, it can be skin, lungs and buccal cavity, here only lungs. Then skin is cast off in the form of uh, layers. And lizards and snakes, mostly two pairs of limbs are present. Belly creepers and dry skin, mostly dry skin here. 
but reptile saves mammals have a special feature called amnion that is for completing their development on land then here testudo chameleon chameleon is called uh, garden lizard calotes uh, is garden lizard chameleon is tree lizard crocodile is uh, alligator hemidactylus nasa ophiophagus hanna that is king cobra bangerus crate viperas like etc okay most specialized group of vertebrates is birds they do have two pairs of limbs but first pair modified into wings then in the, here also there is uh, one some points they are similar to reptiles but in other aspect they are different so fishes amphibians reptiles are poikiloderms birds and mammals maintain constant temperature so they are called homeotherms certain birds are present which are called flightless like struthio african ostrich four chambered heart is present warm bladed body is covered by feathers and scales are present on their legs and fertilization of this internal and all birds without exception at all oviparous just modified into beak neophron is vulture and aptenodytes is penguin right then mammals majority <coughs> mammals you know so amphibians uh, reptiles saves mammals uh, they are called as tetrapods right so these are all called tetrapods but this group is called amniotes means they are all provided with amnion for completing their development <coughs> so just uh, once look into this uh, chart completely uh, to have overall idea <coughs> and uh, mammals uh, mammary glands are present constant body temperature four chambered heart internal development hair is present on the body they are also specialized in having pinna to receive the sound vibration from different directions and highly successful most abundant uh, among uh, uh, the present day groups uh, number wise uh, varieties may be higher in fishes but most successful group among chordates is mammals right but uh, if you want to see the overall idea or comparative chart once we go through this chart uh, it was also mentioned in the ncrt book but uh, if you see chordata so notochord dorsal hollow nerve cord that is a major thing and uh, nerve cord is dorsal and uh, so dorsal hollow nerve cord so that is the thing for all earlier forms it is dorsal tubular nerve cord so e Uh, dorsal uh, nerve cord is present in chordates and ventral solid nerve cord in the case of non chordates right so segmentation what are the members if you observe the point of segmentation segmentation can be present in annelida can be present in arthropoda that is another group and another group with segmentation is chordata so these are the three groups uh, provided with segmentation you see their uh, uh, habitat uh, marine forms uh, porifera nidaria mostly marine tinophora only marine echinoderms uh, marine forms and like this so try to make an overall thing and mammals uh, they complete even development internally the period of internal development is called gestation period for this purpose they develop placenta so you thoroughly go through all examples given in ncrt but try to read additional examples other than ncrt so have a good day